Hello, you're watching Shalom World News. I'm Rory McLennan coming to you from Glasgow, Scotland. Here are the latest headlines from around the world. Pope Francis has defended his diplomatic strategy in dealing with both China and Russia. In an interview with America magazine of the Jesuit order, the Holy Father said his reluctance to directly name President Vladimir Putin of Russia while denouncing the war in Ukraine was because it was not necessary, as it is already known. When asked about the Vatican's controversial agreement with China on the appointment of bishops and his silence on rights abuses in the communist nation, Pope Francis said dialogue is the way to best diplomacy. His comments came as China and the Holy See were once again at odds, with the Vatican on Saturday issuing a rare public rebuke of the Chinese for installing an auxiliary bishop in a diocese that is not recognised by the Holy See. Last week, the Russian National Guard controlling the Ukrainian seaside city of Berdyansk arrested two priests of the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church. They were charged with engaging in subversive and guerrilla operations. Father Bohdan Galeta, a Redemptorist priest, and Father Ivan Levitsky, the abbot of the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary Church, were accused of possessing firearms, ammunition and books on Ukrainian history in a parish facility. The Donetsk exarchate refuted the charges, dubbing the incarceration unfounded and illegitimate and requesting the cleric's immediate release. Cardinal Leonardo Sandri, former prefect of the Congregation for the Oriental Churches, reflected on the damage caused by the Ukrainian war during the Divine Liturgy in commemoration of the victims of the Holodomor on Saturday, November the 26th in the Roman Basilica of St. Sophia. He said... The skies of Ukraine are crisscrossed with weapons of destruction, which attack everywhere, even paediatric wards. In any event, if they do not directly sow death, they generate the interruption of electricity and water while the cold grips and winter spreads. Millions of Ukrainians perished in the Holodomor, also known as the Terror Famine, which occurred in Soviet Ukraine between 1932 and 1933. The famine was deliberately caused after Russian Premier Joseph Stalin nationalised all farmlands. Cardinal Sandri also emphasised Pope Francis's closeness with the people. Religious freedom outfits in the United States are rejoicing after the deadline for the Biden administration to file an appeal regarding a federal court decision that invalidated a transgender rule from late August expired on Friday. This has been hailed as a triumph by religious liberty groups. The Health and Human Services Transgender Mandate, which was implemented under President Barack Obama and carried over to the Biden administration, required hospitals and doctors to perform gender reassignment surgeries on any patient, including children, even if it went against the doctor's conscience or professional judgment. The Fifth Circuit Court ruled in August that the Christian Healthcare Network cannot be forced to perform gender reassignment surgery in contravention of its beliefs or expert medical judgment, and thereby halted the mandate. The decision could be appealed to the US Supreme Court up until Friday, November the 25th. Since nothing was done, the Fifth Circuit's decision is still valid. The Chosen, a television series based on the Bible, premiered on Netflix last week and rapidly rose to the top of the list of most watched programmes. The eight episodes of the first season are available on Netflix and they received a rare most liked badge. It indicates when a show is one of the most thumbed up by subscribers. Meanwhile, with a projected weekend gross of $1.5 million, the theatrical release of The Chosen Season 3, Episodes 1 and 2, held on to 10th spot in the box office rankings. The previous weekend, it debuted at number 3, clocking a revenue of $8.7 million. In a post-Thanksgiving article, the New York Times highlighted the show and praised it for pulling off a crowd-funded miracle, a hit with a Christian fanbase that is breaking into the mainstream. Maronite Archbishop Samir Nasser of Damascus told Asia News that the Syrian people have undergone an unending calvary for 12 years. He said they have been forced to be quiet despite protracted cries of suffering brought on by conflict as well as by economic and health difficulties that are comparable to a poverty bomb. The Maronite Archbishop expressed hope that the season of Advent might bring light to the suffering Syrian people. The citizens of the civil war ravaged country have been tormented for the past 12 years by war and its consequences, including economic and health crises. 
The prelate highlighted the suffering of people forgotten by the international community. A United Nations report warned that people in Syria faced catastrophic risks ahead of the winter. The relics of Blessed Carlo Acutis are making their way across the towns of Colombia as part of a pilgrimage. It includes prayers for youth who are dealing with anxiety and with depression. The pilgrimage, titled The Smile of God in a Young Man of Extraordinary Holiness, is guided by Luis Alberto Sanchez Serrano, a layman of the Legion of Mary, who together with his family takes care of the first-class relics. The relics include a portion of Blessed Carlo's body and hair. In an article published in March this year, the World Health Organization reported that in the first year of the COVID-19 pandemic, the global prevalence of anxiety and depression increased by 25%. The WHO said the hardest hit has been the youth, who are at disproportionate risk of suicidal and self-injurious behaviour. At least 14 people were killed in a landslide in Cameroon's capital city, Yaoundé, on Sunday. According to Reuters, the victims were attending a funeral on a football pitch at the base of a 20-metre-high mud embankment when the landslide occurred. Sunday's service had been intended as a memorial tribute to five members of a local association who died this year. Cameroon has witnessed many natural calamities this year, with many people being forced to leave their homes following the natural disasters. Neighbouring Nigeria also was hit by severe floods this year, which left a trail of death and destruction. The Court of Appeal in the United Kingdom has dismissed a case brought by Heidi Crowter, a woman with Down syndrome. In the lawsuit, she argued against permitting the abortion of babies with similar conditions up until birth. Though the current time limit of abortion is 24 weeks, the law permits the termination of pregnancy after 24 weeks if there is a substantial risk that if the child were born, it would suffer from such physical or mental abnormalities as to be seriously handicapped. Following the court's ruling, Crowther expressed her desire to take the case to the Supreme Court. She said that though she is upset, she will keep on fighting. She thanked her supporters who had donated their time and their money for the court case. Kevin Duffy, who is a former employee of abortion provider Marie Stopes International, has been appointed as the new Executive Director of the Society for the Protection of Unborn Children, or SPUC. It was in 2019 that Mr Duffy left Marie Stopes International. SPUC said that the unique insight and expertise of Mr Duffy would help to ensure that full legal protections are restored to unborn children. Responding to his appointment, Duffy said that he is certain that the false narratives of the abortion industry, which claim to care about women, can be defeated, and a culture of life that truly cares about the well-being of women and safeguarding of human rights can be restored. SPUC, which was founded in 1966, is one of the oldest pro-life organisations in the United Kingdom. Pope Francis celebrated Holy Mass for the Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe at the altar of the chair in St Peter's Basilica on Saturday morning. In his homily, the pontiff focused on three essential ideas, abundance, blessing and gift, that are depicted in the sacred image of Our Lady of Guadalupe. The Pope declared that God always offers himself in abundance rather than giving himself in doses. Instead, the Holy Father said that he gives himself completely Meanwhile, the Latin American and Caribbean Episcopal Council reported on its website that Pope Francis would preside at a Mass in St. Peter's Basilica on December the 12th at 6pm Rome time, both to honour the Virgin of Guadalupe on her feast and to rediscover the profound meaning of the presence of Jesus Christ through Mary in our lands. The Eucharistic celebration can be viewed virtually. The former Patriarchal Vicar of Jerusalem of the Latins, Monsignor Giacinto Bulos Marcuzzo, said the words spoken by Pope Francis at the Angelus are fundamental to awakening attention to the suffering of people in the Holy Land. The Pope made a heartfelt appeal against the violence that kills the future, breaks the lives of young people and weakens hope for peace in the region. He said that the Pope has spoken of peace and hope many times, but his appeals have fallen on deaf ears. He added that the Holy Father's intervention serves to make us not forget the issue, to rekindle peace and hope in people's hearts, and to remind everyone that a solution is possible. Monsignor Marcuzzo exhorted believers not to lose hope in peace and in justice. He concluded, like the prophet Isaiah, we wish peace, reconciliation and happiness for those who remained in Jerusalem.
Pope Francis met 6,000 students, teachers and school administrators in a meeting organised by the National Network of Schools for Peace in Italy on Monday. The Pope stressed the need to always work for peace during the session, which was held in the Paul VI Hall in the Vatican. During the meeting, which was titled For Peace with Care, the Holy Father asked attendees to pay attention to peace. The Pope then said that he wanted to remind his listeners of the examples of two prominent witnesses to peace, those being Pope St. John XXIII and Martin Luther King Jr., whom he called prophets of our times. He said in an American context, heavily marked by racial discrimination, Martin Luther King Jr. made everyone dream about a world of justice, freedom and equality. Pope Francis encouraged children to dream big like those two individuals. And those are your latest headlines. Do join us again tomorrow for more. And do remember, you can always visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.